What does tax and financial planning strategy look like following the referendum? Well, whatever it looks like, it's going to be determined by fiscal, economic and political considerations. Politically first, we are obviously looking at a pretty much brand new government. We have a new Prime Minister, we have a new Chancellor of the Exchequer and we have a new Pensions Minister. The new Prime Minister is overtly more inclusive from the statements that she's given so far. Um, talking about a government for the many rather than the few and definitely a continuation of aggressive attack on aggressive tax avoidance. So we can expect to see a continuation of that theme. From the Chancellor's standpoint, uh, an accountant by training, someone who is much more measured, one might think, than George Osborne, much less rabbit out of the hat policy expected there. He has stated that he wants to reset fiscal policy. Now, both he and the Prime Minister, more importantly, have just ditched George Osborne's target of a zero deficit at 2020, recognising that post-Brexit with the continuing uncertainty and that uncertainty likely to continue for some time, will need to be more stimulative than austere. So whilst there is a long-term commitment to reduce government borrowing, the short term will definitely, the short to medium term will probably be more about stimulation as far as we can within government finances. Um, we'll be looking at no emergency budget, which we know very well by now. So hard evidence of tax policy will come, first hard evidence will come in the autumn statement, which is likely to be quite late, but most people are predicting early December, followed by the spring budget. Pensions Minister, nothing definite stated there except that the freedoms are going to be continued with, and inevitably, and he hasn't said this, that, that there will have to be a continued review of the actual cost of pensions tax relief, which is over 30 billion, as we know. So that's the political position. Broadly speaking, we know more inclusive, continued attack on aggressive tax avoidance, and let's have data-based tax policy, is what the Chancellor is, is saying. Let's wait and see, rather than taking some kind of knee-jerk emergency action. When we look at economically, whilst we've done pretty well as a country, surprisingly well, post the referendum, what we're looking at is pretty much every commentator predicting a low to very low, no growth, possibly more low than no growth, second half of the year. Um, it may well not turn out that way, but most people are predicting that, and that will, of course, influence taxation policy. So what do you do when you have no growth and you want stimulation? You can do some government borrowing. We've seen a new round of quantitative easing, which started off quite shakily and then turned out OK to release more money into the economy. Um, we've also, we'll also see, I'm sure, when we see the autumn statements and direct government spending on infrastructure projects. But after that, we're looking at monetary policy and monetary policy related to reduced interest rates hasn't got that much further to go because interest rates are already quite low. What can taxation policy do to stimulate the, the uh, economy uh, whilst not getting ourselves even deeper into debt? So one expects if there's going to be taxation change to stimulate that we'll need to look at a, a selective package of tax cuts and maybe some tax increases. And that's where the, the pension side of things may be attractive with a 30 odd billion pot to look at that might not might not adversely affect growth if you were to reduce relief in some way. So taxation wise, personal tax, you need to consider, well, we've got some constraints there with personal tax because we've got legislative constraint over not increasing personal tax rates, um, even though, of course, legislation can be changed. Um, so that's the biggest constraint. And I, I don't personally see major changes in relation to personal tax and certainly not pushing 45% up to 50% as the additional rate of tax. Then we've got business tax and we've seen a very strong downward trajectory in relation to corporation tax rates. You know, we're about to get a 19% rate by 2017. I think we're looking at a 17% rate and a long-term aspiration to go to 15%. Um, it may be that some break is put on that, but it's generally accepted that that has a beneficial economic effect, even though the cost is quite high. In that, for every 1% of corporation tax uh, reduction, we're seeing a two billion pounds cost. So they'll look at it, and maybe we'll, they might not be so um, aspirational as they are in relation to the government, that is, bringing down corporation tax rate, but we'll have to wait and see. At the moment, they're hardwired in, as it were. Interestingly, though, we have the finance bill still resting without royal assent being given, and we won't get that until September, October. So that'll be bashing up against the autumn statement. And there are a few things in the finance bill that are waiting to be enacted that could 
possibly change if they see them as well in a reaction to a change circumstance following referendum and potential Brexit, we need to maybe not enact those. One of those may be on the investment front that we're seeing the CGT changes, the, the uncalled for and surprisingly attractive CGT changes in the last budget, which are in that finance bill, uh, possibly being uh, ameliorated or maybe just not enacted. Although, you know, that, that's not a prediction. It's something that is a piece of low hanging fruit probably doesn't generate huge amounts of money, so it may be just left. But remember, those changes are bringing the higher rate down from 28 to 20, and we're looking at the 18% rate down to 10. Very, very attractive. It's a watch this space position in relation to investments. But remember, on investments, we are in a year where we've seen three new changes. I've said it before, I'll say it again. We've seen the dividend tax allowance of £5,000 tax-free and broadly 7.5% increase in rates above that. We've seen the new savings um, savings income changes giving a £1,000 savings allowance and of course we've got those CGT changes. It's a really strong story to talk to people about investments and tax reduced investments beyond the obvious ones, pensions and ISA. And on pensions, as I've already mentioned, we do have a £30 billion plus cost so some change can't be ruled out, it never can and if you like the situation that you're in currently and the ability to use unused relief and get relief at your highest rate subject to lifetime allowance and annual allowance and it's probably as good a time as any to think about taking up that relief. There is some talk, not official talk, but amongst those in the know as it were with regard to pensions that you couldn't rule out some form of flat rate relief which would play reasonably well politically, we'll have to wait and see. So all of this is based on what we've heard so far and, and not a very clearly drawn out piece of tax policy, but we are looking at some form of change having to be uh, taken because of the economic and the fiscal and the political position. So the hard evidence for that, as I said, will come in the autumn statement, followed by the spring budget. But as financial planners, you can't ignore what we've heard so far and in your conversations with clients it does no harm to use those factors to generate activity where it would make absolute sense to take it now and in particular in relation to pensions and investment planning. We'll be covering all of these changes as they occur when we get them in the autumn statement and the budget through our bulletins and our videos so I would encourage you to keep locked on to TechLink.